Hi everyone, Charles here from MLU Papers. For the new joiners, welcome. On this channel, I share with you my take on the most recent and the most inspiring research papers that I come across in a hopefully nice and approachable way. I also share tips and advice for those of you who are interested in a career or studies in machine learning. And today, we are going to explore a wonderful paper in optimization which solves a conjecture on Google's algorithm PageRank. If you haven't checked it yet, I have released a video which covers PageRank in detail with a lot of fun animations right there, which is the motivation for the optimization problem in today's video. Today's paper is titled Accelerated and Sparse Algorithms for Approximate Personalized PageRank and Beyond. It has been written by David Martinez Rubio, Elias Fiat, and Sebastian Pocutta, and was published last year, 2023, at a prestigious conference on learning theory. In today's video, I will first introduce the sparse page rank problem. Then I will give a quick background on the most popular machine learning algorithm, gradient descent, and its projective and accelerated variants. Next, we will see the conjecture solved by today's paper. Finally, I will present the paper's algorithm which solves the conjecture. Let's jump in. Sparse page rank. For each web page P, Google's algorithm PageRank computes a rating RP such that when you make a Google search, it returns first to pages P with the largest rating RP. The objective is to compute the ratings RP, and we saw in my video on PageRank that it is equivalent to an optimization problem called the quadratic problem QP. In the problem considered, the definition of Q implies that it is symmetric, positive definite, and that its non-diagonal elements are non-positive. Now, practically, when you make a Google search, chances are you will only check some of the first NZ web pages that Google will display. For example, NZ is equal to three. Therefore, we don't need to compute the rating RP for all the web pages P out there. Instead, we only need to find the NZ pages P which have the largest ratings RP, and we can set the ratings of all the other pages equal to zero in red here. In other words, we're looking for sparse rating vector R, which only has NZ elements RP, which are not zero. Previous works showed that instead of a standard rating problem, one can find a sparse rating vector by adding a small L1 penalization to the problem in red on the screen. We denote by g of x the new function to minimize. In today's video, we will solve this minimization problem. Accelerated projective gradient descent. Say you want to find the minimizer x star of a convex differentiable function g of x. Starting from any point x0 of your choice, gradient descent constructs a sequence of points x1, x2, until some xk, hopefully close to x star for some large k. The gradient descent update is the following. At every point xk, you will look for xk plus 1 close to xk, such that g of xk plus 1 is smaller than g of xk. In other words, xk plus 1 is equal to xk plus hk for some small hk, and since g is differentiable at xk, it holds that g of xk plus 1 is approximately equal to g of xk plus the gradient of g at xk times hk. Now, what value of hk makes this smaller than g of xk? Basically, any value such that the term in the blue box is negative. There are many possible choices in the optimization literature, but the most classic one is to take hk equal to minus beta k times the gradient of g at xk for some positive beta k. The choice of beta k is actually quite tricky. As you can see on the figure on the left, if beta k is too small, then xk is too close to xk plus 1, and then to xk plus 2, xk plus 3, and so on. And in the end, the algorithm may never get close to x star. On the other hand, if beta k is too large, then xk plus 1 is not close to xk anymore, and the approximation formula on the right is no longer valid. Intuitively, you may miss x star. Now, in our problem, x must be in the convex set C of vectors whose entries are non-negative. In this case, we want to minimize g of x over all x in C, and at each step k, the output of our algorithm xk must be in C. At each step k, the update of a projective gradient descent algorithm is simply the projection on the set C of a gradient descent update. That's all. Finally, some works have shown that we can speed up the process by adding an extrapolation step in the gradient descent in blue here, with some parameter wk in 0, 1. Let's see what happens after a few steps. Here we draw in red the gradient descent update, and in blue the extrapolation update. At every step k, 
The gradient descent updates in red tend to push XK to the left of the screen, while the extrapolation updates in blue tend to push it to the bottom of the screen. The extrapolation step thus tapers down the latest gradient descent update by averaging it with the previous updates. Such an algorithm is called accelerated projective gradient descent. Before we jump into the core of the topic, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. It really helps the channel. Thank you. The conjecture. Now let's get back to our problem, page rank. We run a gradient descent algorithm to minimize the function g, and it returns a sequence of points x1, x2, xk. Now, how many steps k are required such that the distance between the true minimizer x star and our approximation xk is smaller than some small eta? In dimension 1, k is equal to 1 out of epsilon log of 1 out of eta for non-accelerated methods, and it is equal to the faster square root of 1 out of epsilon times log of 1 out of eta for their accelerated counterparts. In dimension n, if we run those algorithms for each entry of x, the complexity is multiplied by n. Now this is huge because n is the total number of pages on the web. However, one previous work has found an algorithm based on a non-accelerated method, which only updates the nz non-zero elements of a rating. And therefore, it achieves a much better complexity nz 1 out of epsilon log of 1 out of eta. However, can we do the same with an accelerated method and therefore achieve the faster complexity nz square root of 1 out of epsilon log of 1 out of eta? This was actually an open problem until this paper came and said yes. An accelerated solution to sparse page rank. So we first introduce algorithm conjugate directions page rank, CDPR, which works as follows. Denoting by EI the vectors of a canonical basis of a space, the problem can be written as the minimization of g of a sum of the lambda i e i for lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, non-negative. An important point is that, since the matrix Q has non-positive off-diagonal elements, there exist non-negative mu1, mu2, mu n, such that the problem becomes this for some family of vectors f1, f2, fn, which satisfies f i transpose q f j is equal to zero if i is different from j. Basically, we can prove, and this is detailed on mlnewpapers.com, link in the description down below, that there exists a smart change of basis which does not compromise the non-negativity of the variables. We define algorithms CDPR as follows. We start from x0 is equal to zero. At every step k, we choose i such that the i entry of a gradient of g is negative. Then we compute f i, we optimize with respect to mu i, and we update xt. When there is no more such i, we have reached the minimizer x star. Now to prove that this algorithm works, we need to show that it only optimizes the mu i such that mu i star is not zero, and besides that it does not optimize the same mu i twice. Let's see why. We can decompose g of a sum of a mu i f i using its definition. Next, we expand the sums and we use the fact that f i transpose q f j is equal to zero when j is not equal to i. It only remains the terms for j is equal to i, which can be written as a sum of g of mu i f i. Therefore, each mu i can be optimized separately, and the algorithm will never optimize the same mu i twice. Since we start from zero, this ensures that the number of optimizations is equal to the number of non-zero mu i star, which is nz. Now, recall that our objective is to minimize g of the sum of the lambda i e i for lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n non-negative, and that there is only a small set s of indices i such that lambda i is not equal to zero. What we did with CDPR is that at each step, we selected one index j such that the jth entry of a gradient of g is negative. Then we constructed a good direction fj and optimized g along that good direction. In other words, at every step, we have a set of indices st. We add a new index j to the set st, such that the jth entry of a gradient of g is negative. We optimize g of a sum for i in st of the lambda i f i for lambda i non-negative. And we explain that the sequence of sets st is increasing toward s. Now, from an optimization perspective, it is difficult to find a good direction to optimize along at every step. So instead of constructing one good direction fj at each step, we simply add to st all the indices j such that the jth entry of a gradient of g is negative, 
and we optimized g of a sum for i and st of the lambda i f i using an accelerated projected gradient descent presented earlier in this video. Finally, we retract a tiny bit such that, like in CDPR, we remain below the true minimizer and increase step by step toward it. This algorithm is called Accelerated Sparse Page Rank ESPR and solves the conjecture. All right, everyone, that's it for today's paper. If you want to know more about it, I have made a post on my blog, mlnewpapers.com, where, among others, I explain Graham Schmidt process used to build the FI from CDPR. I have also put a link to the amazing paper we explored today in the description box down below. If you enjoy short videos on fantastic research papers like this one, there will be more coming up on this channel, so stay tuned. I also give tips and advice related to career, job interviews, studies, and more in the field of machine learning. And I have new video formats coming soon on the channel, so make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified of future videos. Thank you again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.